Pretend you've been dealt this hand. Which two cards would you discard if it was your opponent's crib? Would you discard the pair of aces, keeping the jack, five, and the two sevens for yourself? Perhaps you might discard the pair of sevens. Or maybe you would discard the jack and five. Think about your answer and try to remember it. We'll be returning to this hand later in this video. If this is a tough choice, that's okay. Choosing which cards to discard isn't always easy, and that's where this video might be helpful. Because what if there was a way to determine the best discard pair for any given hand? It turns out there is, and in this video, I'll show you how. Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on discarding and two-person cribbage. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use simple math and statistics to make better discard choices, which can lead to more points and a better chance of winning games. The concept I'll be showing in this video is called expected average. This concept is explained in detail online at a really great site called the Cribbage Forum. This site provides some excellent information on cribbage strategy and I highly recommend checking it out. I'll include a link to the site in the description below. The purpose of this video is really to present this concept in a condensed and visual format that is an alternative to reading the website. But again, I encourage anyone interested in cribbage strategy to check that site out. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to make a few assumptions that if you've come this far and found this video, then you're probably already familiar with how to play cribbage and maybe you're starting to look at adding strategy to your game. Therefore, you probably already know the standard cribbage terminology, so I won't get into that here. With that said, let's dive in. So first of all, why is discarding an important part of cribbage? Discarding is a critical decision point in cribbage, and in a two-player game, this decision occurs every time a new hand is dealt which happens on average around nine to 10 times every game, sometimes more. That means nine or 10 opportunities to apply strategy and gain an edge over the opposing player. The point of cribbage is to arrive at 121 points before your opponent does. If you can apply some strategy, that strategy can help maximize the points you earn while at the same time minimizing points that you give to your opponent. That's where the concept of expected average comes in. So what is expected average? Expected average is defined as the net scoring potential of both hand and the crib hand. It's essentially the single most important number to consider when discarding. Another way of saying this is, as the dealer, the expected average is the average points in the hand plus the average points in the crib after the cut. As the opponent, it's the average points of the hand minus the crib. If this seems a bit confusing right now, that's all right. As you watch this video, I'll be showing this concept in detail and hopefully it will become clearer. There are two steps to calculating expected average. The first step is to calculate the average hand value. Average hand value is the number of points a hand will be worth on average after the cut. The second step is to calculate the average value of the crib. We'll start with step one, calculating hand value. To do this, we look at all possible cut cards and what our hand will be worth for each possible cut card. Remember the hand from the beginning of the video? Let's take a look at one option from that hand to start with. Let's say we decide to keep the ace ace seven seven and discard the five and jack to our crib. We know this hand is worth eight points, but what will it be worth after the cut? To calculate the average value of this hand, we need to first look at all possible cut cards. We'll start with aces. The card frequency is the number of possible cards. Since we're holding two aces in our hand, we know there are two aces still out there. So our card frequency for aces 
is 2. Next, we look at hand value. If one of those two aces were to be cut, how many points will our hand be worth? The hand value of this hand, with an ace as the cut card, is 14 points. We have 6 points and 15s. The 3 aces gives us another 6 points, and a pair of 7s for 2 points. That adds up to 14 points. We then take that 14 points and multiply it by the card frequency. For aces, the card frequency is 2, and that gives a total of 28 points. Next, we move on to twos, and we do the same thing. We look at card frequency. Since our hand contains no twos, that means all of the twos, four of them, are still out there. So the card frequency for twos is four. With the two as the cut card, our hand doesn't improve. Our hand stays at eight points. And again, we multiply the card frequency by the hand value to get total points, which is 32. We then do this for all possible cut cards, and at the end of that exercise, we add up the points to get a sum total. I've already done these calculations, so I can quickly add them in. For this hand, across all possible cuts, the sum total of points is 436. We then take this total, 436, and divide it by 46. The reason we divide by 46 is because 46 is the number of unknown cards. There are 52 cards in a deck, and we know 6 of them, so that leaves 46 as unknowns. When we divide our sum total by 46, we get 9.48. Nine point four eight is the average value of our hand. It's the number of points our hand is worth, and it's a seven seven on average, accounting for all possible cut cards. Let's say we decide to keep the five seven seven jack in our hand and we discard the pair of aces to our crib. If we repeat the same exercise for all cut cards, our sum total is 300, but we can add 12 points to that for a total of 312 because we're holding a jack, the jack of hearts. If the cut card is any heart and there are 12 hearts still out there, we will get an extra point for nibs. So because there are 12 hearts that could be cut, there are 12 possible points out there. So we can take that 312, again divide by 46, and we get 6.78 as the average number of points this hand is worth after the cut. And we can do this exercise for each and every option in this hand. For this particular hand, ace, ace, five, seven, seven, jack, there are eight different hands that we could keep. In other words, eight different discard options. When we calculate the average hand value for all eight options, what we find is the ace eight seven seven hand has the highest average value at 9.48 points. That's the first step. And we're going to hold on to these calculations for now as we move on to the second step. The second step to calculating expected average is to calculate the value of the crib hand. And to do this, we need some data. We need to know how many points crib hands are worth. You may be thinking, we don't know all of the cards in the crib hand. And you're correct. We only know two of them, the two cards that we are discarding. We don't know what two cards our opponent is discarding. This is where discard data comes into play. We have some valuable discard data courtesy of some champion cribbage players. 
and we can use this data in our calculations. I won't get into too much of how this discard data was generated, but this data does come from very reliable sources. Both Dylan Colvert and George Rasmussen are champion cribbage players, ranked number two and number 25 all time respectively, according to the ACC, the American Cribbage Congress. George Rasmussen, just to give some context on how he contributed to discard data, he played thousands of games over his cribbage career. For all of those games, he manually kept track of the cards that were discarded by both players, and he kept track of the total points in each crib hand. So his contributions to discard data were very much based on real gameplay. Here are the discard tables from Hessel, Colvert, and Rasmussen. The way we use these tables is by taking our discard pair and finding the value where these cards intersect. The tables we use depends on who has the crib hand. The tables on the top row are used for discarding when the crib is yours. The tables on the bottom row are used for when your opponent has the crib hand. So for example, if we look at discarding 5-5 five, five to our opponent, that discard pair on average will result in a crib hand with 9.39 points, according to Hessel, 9.30, according to Colvert, and 9.09 .09 points, according to Rasmussen. So the data between those three sources is pretty consistent. From looking at this data, we can notice patterns as well. For example, that certain discard pairs tend to result in high scoring crib hands, like discarding 5-5. Five, five. We can also notice the opposite, that there are certain discard pairs that tend to result in low scoring crib hands, like 10 King for example, which has an average crib value of 3.99, 3.80, or 3.84, which is considerably lower than the 5-5 discard. So we can use this discard data as a way to predict what a crib hand will be worth based on the pair of cards that we are discarding. Let's go back to our example. In our example of keeping a 5-7-7 jack and discarding a pair of aces, we look up the ace-ace discard in the three discard tables. We can take those three values, 5.26, 5.40, and 5.51, and we'll include it in our calculations. We already have our average hand value calculated from before. Now, we can add the average crib value for each discard option. Here we see that not only is ace 7 7 the hand with the highest average hand value at 9.48 points, but the 5-jack discard has the highest average crib value of all options. When we add these numbers together, that total is the expected average. So 9.48 plus 7.04 equals 16.52. 9.48 plus 6.90 is 16.38. And 9.48 plus 7.09 is 16.57. From those eight options, the ace 7 7 hand is the option with the highest expected average. The ace a 7 7 keeps the most points in our hand, and the 5 jack discard should result in a crib hand with the most points. If we average those values together, 16.52, 16.38, and 16.57, we would expect to get a total of 16.49 points from this hand and crib combined. The second best option in this example is the ace-ace-five-jack hand and the seven-seven discard. The expected average for this hand is 12.44 points. So the ace-ace-seven-seven option is approximately four points better than the next best, best option, 
a sinks 5 jack, which means if you discard the 5 jack instead of the 7-7, seven seven, on average you will get 4 more points. Now we look at discarding to the opponent. This is often a more tricky decision because it can mean having to discard valuable cards. Let's take a look at our example hand again, and let's look at the option of discarding the pair of aces. Again, similar to discarding to our own crib, we reference the discard tables, and we find the values in the tables where the discard pairs intersect. In this situation, our discard data shows that discarding a pair of aces will result in an average crib value of 6.07, 6.20, and 5.59. So let's bring those values into our calculation. What we see when we do that is the ace-ace discard results in expected average of 0 0.71, 0 0.58, and 1.19. So 0 0.83 points on average. Remember, because this is the opponent's crib, we subtract the average crib value from the average hand value. So 6.78 minus 6.07 equals 0 0.71. 6.78 minus 6.20 equals 0 0.58. And 6.78 minus 5.59 equals 1.19. So this result is the expected average. Let's look at option 6. If we were to keep the ace ace seven seven and discard the five jack, we would be keeping more points in our hand at 9.48. But discarding the five jack to our opponent's crib would likely result in giving our opponent a high scoring crib hand. Let's look at option four, which is discarding the ace jack to the opponent. The expected average is 2.32, 2.34, and 2.40 for an average of 2.35. By keeping the ace 577, we keep less points in our hand, around 7 points. But even though we are keeping less points in our hand, by discarding the ace jack, we are giving less points to our opponent's crib. So the net value of this hand is the highest among all 8 options. And therefore, option 4 would be considered the optimal choice. If the ace-jack discard was the discard choice you picked at the beginning of this video, good job. One last thing to note about these calculations is you'll notice some of the expected average values have a minus sign in front of them, such as this one. So those are negative values. This means that after the cut, the opponent's crib hand will likely be worth more points than your hand. Sometimes a negative value is unavoidable, like if you are dealt a really poor hand. But otherwise, it's always best to steer clear of negative discard values wherever possible. One last example is this hand, 556699. Which two cards would you discard to your opponent's crib? One rule of thumb that you may have heard is never discard a pair of fives to your opponent's crib. The logic here is pretty sound. Discarding a pair of fives to your opponent's crib will likely earn them a high scoring crib hand, which we saw earlier when we looked at the discard tables. However, there are some situations where the seemingly worst discard choice is in fact the mathematically optimal choice. If you were to analyze this hand, there are six different discard options. The expected averages for this hand show us that the 5-5 discard results in the highest expected average. Even though the average crib value is the highest, it's a little over nine points, we're keeping the most points in our hand at 12.87. And therefore the 5-5 discard is the highest expected average value of these six options.
So a few parting thoughts before the end of this video. First, each and every point matters. You probably notice that sometimes different discard options have expected averages that are very close to each other. In some cases, separated by fractions of a point. To win a game of cribbage, you only need one more point than your opponent. So if you can make better discard choices over the course of a game, those fractions of a point can add up to be the one point needed to get you to 121 points before your opponent gets there. Give this analysis a try on your own. The next tricky hand you're dealt may be jotted down and consider analyzing the different options to see which discard pair is optimal in terms of having the highest expected average. The examples used in this video were for hands that didn't contain a flush, but this concept works for flushes as well, so give it a shot. Not all rules of thumb are guaranteed. Like we saw in the last example, often we hear never throw fives to your opponent's crib, but in some cases this might be your best option. Sometimes the conventional wisdom should be challenged, because it's not always true 100% of the time. And lastly, some limitations. The concept of expected average is one discarding strategy to be used, and it's not the only cribbage strategy. It's one of the tools to have in your cribbage toolbox. There are other considerations like pegging and board position that are important and critical to success. Sometimes you may need to discard in a defensive way to keep your opponent from gaining points, or you may wish to keep a good pegging cards if, for example, you're near, near the end of the game. Hopefully this video helps explain the concept of expected average and how it can be used to determine optimal discards. And hopefully it helps you improve your chances of winning. But most importantly in cribbage, have fun. Thanks for watching.